Well, we're just over three weeks away from Toronto's mayoral by-election, and it's been a busy week on the campaign trail. More than 100 candidates are vying for Toronto's top job, and today we're joined by candidate Josh Matlow to talk a little bit about uh, what we have left in this campaign. Very short campaign, obviously, Josh. Uh, first of all, kind of tell us uh, where we're at in your campaign. Obviously, it's been quite the week yeah. with the suspension for uh, almost 12 hours with the security threat. Uh, tell us kind of what we have left in the next uh, just over three weeks before the election. That's right. Well, you know, after a 12-week election, or, you know, in, in its entirety, it feels like it's a short election, but the reality is three weeks is roughly the time of a normal writ period in a provincial election. So we have a lot of time to get out and speak with people in our communities, understand what their priorities are. I'm hearing that it's safety, affordability, just the ability to live in this city, and the services that have been declining, and that's what I'm focusing on, and I'm, I'm excited to, to win this election with their support. Another thing too, Josh, uh, you were endorsed by MP for Don Valley East, uh, Michael Coteau yeah. today. What does that support mean in terms of uh, what happens with the campaign? What does it mean to you in general for that matter? Well, it personally means a lot because I have a lot of respect for Michael and his values and the work that he does, but it also demonstrates that there is more and more momentum coming toward our campaign because I, I am uniquely representing Torontonians in a way where, like, Olivia has a lot of name recognition and a big party apparatus behind her. Um, there are other candidates who have big corporate lobbyists and a big kind of, you know, you know, push on that. Mark Saunders literally has Doug Ford, and I've got people just coming toward our campaign who believe in our values, believe in what I want to do for Toronto and believe that I'm the guy who no, not only will represent Toronto, but also stand up uh, for our city when, for example, when Doug Ford bullies us and says he's going to privatize Ontario Place, sell off the green belt or, or move the science centre. This also comes to uh, this support that we're talking about here comes yeah. to at the same time that the Youth Start program yes. uh, that you mentioned uh, comes out. Um, first of all, this is a massive program. Tell us about it. And, and the funding behind it yeah. uh, is going to require a lot of money. Where's that money going to come from? Thank you. So the money comes from stabilizing the inflationary costs of some of the top line items in the city budget. In other words, we don't have a lot of money. In fact, we have a budget shortfall, and we're going to have to make decisions, whether it be the police, we're going to have to make decisions about the gardener, we're going to have to make decisions across the board. But we also need to know that we've got kids in our communities who are struggling. Uh, if we want a truly safer and healthier community, we need to acknowledge, finally, that it can't just always be reaction that we want to make sure that our kids who are at risk have paths to be able to succeed, whether it be trauma counseling, homework help, job opportunities, and otherwise. So I'm going to be making those investments to help our, our youth. In terms, Josh, of, of the week we have seen, uh, yeah. in terms of that threat that we saw that obviously affected yep. a lot of frontrunners' campaigns, um, talk to me about that. I mean, with when you see a threat like that, you hear something like that, obviously terrifying for any candidate. Um, and basically followed this chain reaction of, of candidate after candidate suspending their campaign, even though it was a short yeah. period of time. Uh, talk to me a little bit about that threat and kind of moving forward after something like that happens. When I, when I was advised that there was a suspect at large, uh, potentially with a gun, um, I knew that it was important to both, uh, you know, protect my family, and I, I had to give a, my, my wife a very difficult call. We've I've got a 10-year-old daughter at home as well. Uh, but we also uh, cancelled any public events where I would be at uh, because we didn't want the public safety to be impacted as well. In other words, wherever I was, it could have been a risk to other people. Um, I was very grateful that the Toronto police moved quickly. Uh, within hours that evening, I was advised that the suspect had been apprehended. And I just, I don't want Toronto to ever become a city like, you know, places elsewhere where politicians need to always walk around with a bunch of security detail. The biggest thing I should worry about when I'm at a debate or a big event is, you know, maybe remembering some of the things I wanted to mention, not a threat in the room. And I don't want the public to be threatened either. And it's a fine line, too, because obviously you don't want to give too much uh, notice and attention to something yes. like that. But again, there is, of course, the concern for safety when it comes to it something was, like this. It was, it, I mean, unusual is an understatement to describe what happened uh, the other day. Um, it was very difficult to obviously uh, stop our campaign for a day, but at the same time, uh, you can't always choose the reality that you are going to experience but you need to address it responsibly and you need to deal with reality as it is. And the reality was, it was not safe for me to continue campaigning that day 
at public events, especially ones that were advertised. And we wanted to make sure that both the, the staff who work on our team, but also the public who might attend an event, were safe, along with my family. And uh, I'm very grateful that the police uh, acted well and apprehended the suspect. Um, and that just shouldn't ever be considered the normal in politics because the public was, you know, ripped off that day too. They, there were many people who were hoping to go to a debate that had to be canceled. And debates are so important to our local democracy, oh, for sure. For sure. given that this is, the, you know, arguably the most contested election we've had for mayor in nearly a decade. And especially when you consider the fact that this campaign in general is so short yes. to begin with. Uh, every debate matters so much. Every debate uh, matters, but you know, the, the moment that I knew that it was safe to uh, you know, get out there in the public again, I was. And today, I, I can't even count the number of different public events I've been to. I was even drawn into dancing uh, with, with, with somebody at Dundas Square at Desi Fest, which y you may see the video soon. I have no idea how that's going to land. <laughs> um, but it's, I'm loving it. Like, I really enjoy not only um, meeting with communities across our city, but also understanding what their priorities are, because my job as their mayor will be to go to bat for them, to advocate for them. And as I said earlier, I'm, I'm running for mayor not because of any one party supporting me or lobbyists or, uh, or Doug Ford with Mark Saunders. I want to support our city and make sure that it's safe, more affordable and livable.